Hola everybody, it's me again, Unika and Ezekiel, and we are featuring Miles in the Back today, and we're going over story four of How Long Till Black Future Month, yay! And then, so the first three stories that we read, um, we had a story about the city, we had a couple stories about some cool cities, we had um, a story about, what was the last story we read? That was the City Born Great, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, no, no, no. It was the Emmeline story with, oh, we touched on a little bit of black magic and magic during segregation time between uh, black women and white women. Um, and that was a pretty interesting take on magic during segregation time and how people were using their magic in the background of what was going on during the black renaissance and um, racism and black codes and all that, you know, interesting stuff. And then this story is called La, La Alchemista. And um, it seems that this story is set in Italy. We say Italy because of the language that is used in the story, how they address each other. You have the term Signora and Signora. Um, the lead character, her name is Franca. So yeah, that's what's happening. Um, in the story, Franca is in the kitchen and she's cooking. She's obviously a chef at work. And a guy walks into the kitchen. And this guy that walks in the kitchen, he has a request of her. He um, comes in with a whole bunch of ingredients and he's like, you know, I have some things. I have something that I want you to make for me. I've heard about you and I want you to make something for me. So these aren't ordinary ingredients. He has a lot of truffles. Um, he has, you know, animal livers. He has a lot of, you know, very odd things in this bag. I and newt, things like that. He, so he then you get the vibe of witchcraft and alchemy by the list of ingredients that he is asking her to make a recipe for. I just thought it was weird at first, especially when they brought in the the blowtorch. Yeah, like there was a certain way she had to prepare it as well. It was different levels of preparation before the entire dish was finished. So it was a very artistic outlook on alchemy, on uh, potions and things like that in the terms of someone just working in the kitchen. So then she, for a whole week, hold on a second. What's up? Um, what do you mean? I, I really need to. You can just stand here and listen. Right. I have a question for you in a little bit. Hold on. So, in, um, in the story, he comes, and so she makes it. And what happens at the end when she makes the recipe? What happens to Ah, to him and her, they both get younger. They both get younger. They both get younger from eating this potion, this recipe that the guy gave her. So then he gives her another uh, list of things. He, well, actually, he gives her another bag of goodies. So he gives her a bag of ingredients, and he says, All right, um, I have something else I want you to make for me, but this time I'm not going to give you a recipe. This time I'm just going to give you the ingredients, and I want you to just make something for me. Um, so she takes on the task. Again, another week of not sleeping. She's very tired. She's and putting a lot of effort into it. She's even called in for a vacation and used the, her own kitchen restaurant the restaurant to mm -hmm. do it. She uses the kitchen at her job to make this. So for another week, she's not sleeping. Um, so then he eats it again. He's younger again, and she's younger from making it. And she's asking him, you know, how is this so? Like, how is this happening? And he's telling her, you know, just by the energy of you creating it alone is enough you know, to make you younger, and then I'm getting younger from eating it. You know, I've searched high and low for a chef like you, and you're basically the one. So, um, he gives her an offer to be his personal uh, teacher. He wants to be her apprentice. He wants to learn how to make these things himself. And he wants her to continue to make these things for him as well. And her one request was, you know, I'll make these things for you, but my one request is I don't want to make any more truffles. And so, um... But why? If he's already giving you, like, almost an infinite supply. I think it was, like, a very stressful to cook with them. I, it might have been the hardest part. I'm unsure the significance of... To add, like, of mushrooms to a dish? White truffles, right. I'm, I'm not sure the significance of white truffles. I know they are very expensive, and they are... Because of their expensiveness, when people eat them because they feel like they're eating something expensive, they think they're eating something delicious. I think they're delicious. Uh, not the mushroom, but the truffle butter. I love truffle butter. Uh, well, <clears throat> I don't, I never tried truffles. 
Okay. And I haven't heard of them since this book said it and since you said you actually tried it before and it's a real thing. So we have to broaden your horizons, kid. Now get you some truffles in your life. No. No. <laughs> so I'll... that's the story. It's a pretty short, sweet story. This is going to be a short episode. But um, very much enjoyed the story. It was nice. It was nice and short and sweet. And, you know, I could definitely see that, like, on an episode of, like, Twilight Zone or something maybe where, like, for, like, the first three or four times this guy walks into the, you know, restaurant, he you don't know what he's ordering maybe. Mommy. You don't see the effects of it. He just goes home and eats it and it comes back different or something. So she thinks it's, like, different people. I could see that being a cool episode. Um, so as far as my point for the book for this episode of Nobody's Reading... My point is, I like to cook. Um, When I cook, I don't, you know, at first I'm thinking, I'm in the kitchen, I'm looking at everything that I have. You know, when I lived by myself, when it was just us, I would have the, you know, what I'm, I used to have like a Monday through Sunday calendar on the refrigerator and I would plan out my meals before I went food shopping so I went over shop. And so I would already know what I was cooking before I even walked into the kitchen. But now I don't do it that way anymore um, because, you know, we live with family and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I just go in the kitchen. I look at my ingredients or whatever. I look at what I have and I just go. And I kind of don't think. I will admit today um, I had to make my little man some um, toothpaste. And in the midst of me making him some toothpaste, I caught myself giving attentions and thinking about, you know, what I wanted this toothpaste to do for him how I wanted it to heal him, how I wanted to heal, like, you know, my mom and what she has going on when she brushes her teeth because she likes to utilize my toothbrush, toothpaste. Um, same thing with, you know, their dad. He wanted me to make him some toothpaste. I, so, like, I had, like, intentions as I was making it. And, you know, when I cook in the kitchen, I do too. Like, I'll have intentions when I'm cooking in the kitchen. Like, you know, I want this to taste good. I want this to make me happy. I'll be dancing if I'm playing music while I'm cooking um, and things like that. So, you know, I have, a you know, different things that I do when I'm in the kitchen, when I'm cooking. So, in a sense, that is alchemy. Um, because there is an outcome. You know, people who come in my kitchen hungry or with a hunger attitude, they, you know, sit down and eat the plate and they're not hungry anymore. Their stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Um, that hunger attitude is gone. Um, you know, it's, it's happiness going through their bodies or whatever. So, I feel like, you know, intention fulfilled, right? Um, so, that's just what I got out of it. Um, hey, Kima. Um, she's she's allowing us to utilize her platform today. You know, now I have my question. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So, if you apply what you just said to the book, then what did she do to make it so that she would be younger? So, when she asked him... I know, I know, like, the homeless was just trying to be uplifting about, like, you just doing it just made it happen. But okay. What made it so that it would be... So that she would get younger as well, or the old man, instead of her like getting older. Because didn't she kind of for the second one? She was tired. Of, yeah, she was tired. She dedicated everything to it. I think it was a lot to do with the energy she was putting into the concoction or the meal or whatever have you. I say that because um, no matter how difficult it was, she didn't give up. If you read how her attitude was while she was cooking it, she was very determined. She was very determined to make this the best dish. Uh, like, this dish was full of pride. Um, so much so that the boss was even concerned about her. Right. So I think the fact that she cared so much and she poured so much energy into the dish, that's why she got the youthfulness in return. So you know basically... Saying? They just gave out positive energy for dinner. Right. You put love into a meal, you get love back. That's the kind of vibe or so I got. So, um, that was your question for it? Yeah. Hey, it's a 10-minute episode, and that's okay. This was like a little 15-page story. It was nice, short, and sweet, and to the point. So, that's our story for La Alchemista of How Long to Black Future Month by N.K. Jemison. If you don't have the book yet, you are more than welcome to follow along with us on YouTube. We have our first, uh, what, three stories already on YouTube on our Less Nobody's Instagram page. So, um, you can check out our first three episodes. If you want to look at any of the other books we have already read, you can check them out on YouTube as well. Uh, what else? What else? What else? 
So the next story we're going to go through. And you know, you guys, it's never too late to get this book. There's like a good 15 stories, 15, 20 stories. And we are now on story five, which is called The Effluent Engine. And this starts on page 75. This is about a 30 page read. A little over, like a good 40 page read. So, the fluent engine, what does that sound like? Uh, it's E F F L L. I feel like it's not even an engine. I feel as if it's just a termination as a You think so? The affluent engine. Yeah, I could see that. I think that has more so to do with energy than a uh, legit, like you know engine so that's the next story that we're gonna read sorry we're a couple days late we had a couple of personal things going on you know we're on quarantine and then we went to go to visit family and i just be on the move just doing whatever so like i hate giving y'all a specific day and time we're gonna get it done i always try to get it done once a week because that is the goal but the day of the week and the time is sometimes pretty difficult but if you don't catch us um during the week i say we're gonna do it best believe you're gonna catch that episode on our youtube the same week so um definitely gonna do that you can inbox me later about the toothpaste i um uh, my toothpaste depends on what size the little size that i have i i'll give it to you for 10 that's not it's a small thing um it's a lot of oils in it um i got black seed oil tea tree oil peppermint oil and coconut oil and a couple other things in there and it's really good for t teeth healing and stuff like that so um yeah so that's the next story that we're reading in this book the fluent engine we'll see what that has in store hopefully we'll be back here monday at eight o'clock and we will be on time and not on cpt hey mom we can't wrap it up yet mm. well remember how today you went out for like a good hour mm -hmm. what did you do i went to shopper I went to shop right. I got some trading done while I was standing in line. I uh, <laughs> I went but, to the vitamin shop and bought all the oils and some vitamins. Oh, and that's then it. you were able to ship out. Oh yeah, yeah. I was able to ship out the bingo prize. Thank you. So to all my bingo prize winners, your prizes were mailed out today. Um, I had a few orders I had to fill today too. It took her a good Thank hour, you. so I wanted to remind her. <laughs> I did do that today. I did so much stuff today. So yeah, so all my bingo prize winners, be on the lookout for your prizes. They are coming in the mail. Um, tracking numbers. On the receipt, it said more so Saturday, Friday or Saturday, so everybody could be getting those. Um, so that's exciting. I can't wait for everybody to open their prizes. Um, what else I got going on? The Gemini reading is coming up. So right now, I still have the Taurus reading on the on our YouTube platform. So if you guys are interested in cosmogony or cosmology, definitely check out the Less Nobody's YouTube page because we do have the Taurus planetary forecast and Taurus season um, as a gist overview on there. Um, that's it. That's it. What are you doing, Zeke? Nothing. Zeke just got accepted into P Tech. P Tech is a big deal. My baby got accepted into a um, engineering program in his high school. So when he's in eighth grade now, so next year when he starts his uh, freshman year of high school, um, I hope it won't be in here. He hopes. I hope it won't be from home. But I do hope either whether in home or in school, I just you know pray for safety regardless. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. He's gonna graduate with his high school diploma and his associates in engineering. Mm -hmm. That's very, very exciting. For the free, for the free. That's so exciting. Um, and that's pretty much it, all we have going on. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to people on the Facebook platform for letting us record this like three times because it was not working on my end on my platform. Um, and that's all we have for you. Happy Wednesday. Make sure you got Eshwa on your uh, altar today. Make sure you got Mercury uh, components on that altar today under the full moon on a Wednesday. Also, it's a Scorpio full moon, so you can have your Scorpio elements up there as well. All right. Happy praying. And make sure.